In this video, I'm going to look at Born Harbour cycles. Now, Born Harbour cycles are used to calculate lattice enthalpy. So I've got an example on the board for you now. This is the equation that accompanies the lattice enthalpy for sodium chloride. So if we have a look at the equation, that will help us work out the definition for lattice enthalpy. So lattice enthalpy is defined as the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic lattice is formed from its gaseous ions. Just to check we've got that, we'll have a go at another one. So what would the equation look like for the lattice enthalpy for magnesium chloride? So remember we want to form one mole of an ionic lattice, so that's MgCl2, it's obviously a solid, all ionic compounds are solid at room temperature. And which ions will this be made from? Well it's obviously made from the magnesium 2 plus ion, remember the ions must be gaseous, and we're going to need two chloride ions, and of course they're gaseous as well. So the enthalpy change that accompanies that reaction would be the lattice enthalpy for magnesium chloride. There's some important information we need to know about lattice enthalpies. So lattice enthalpies are always exothermic. There's always going to be an attraction between the positive metal ion and the negative non-metal ion. And so when they come together, they will release energy. So we have negative values for the delta H. The magnitude of the lattice enthalpy indicates the ionic bond strength. So the more exothermic or the more negative would be telling you that you've got a stronger ionic bond than a lattice enthalpy that's less negative. We only have lattice enthalpies for ionic compounds and we can't measure them directly because you can't really have gaseous ions. So how on earth do we measure lattice enthalpy? We use Born Harbor cycles, of course, and we've seen enthalpy cycles before um, at AS, where enthalpy cycles are used to calculate enthalpy change values for reactions that can't be measured directly. So this is just another example of that. So what we'll do now is we'll construct a Born Harbor cycle for sodium chloride, seeing as how we've used that already in our example. Um, and there's a rule that I need to let you know about, and that is the arrows that we use indicate whether a reaction or a process is exothermic or endothermic. So a down arrow signifies an exothermic process and an up arrow indicates an endothermic process. So we're going to start off the Born Harbor cycle like this. So you can see that we've got the lattice enthalpy for sodium chloride up on the board there. So remember, lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy change, the delta H, the LE stands for lattice enthalpy, of course. It's the enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of a solid ionic lattice from the gaseous ions. And of course, it's exothermic, and so this arrow must point down. So essentially what we need to do is we need to create a cycle out of this. In other words, we need to find another way of getting from here back to here, if you like. And that's going to involve quite a few different enthalpy changes. So in, at ASU, you're familiar with the small enthalpy cycles where we use enthalpies of combustion or enthalpies of formation. This Born Harbor cycle is actually going to apply the same principle, but it's going to use more enthalpy changes. So this alternative route starts off with this process here. So we've got Na solid plus a half Cl2 gas going to a mole of sodium chloride. Now this is obviously 
the enthalpy change of formation because we've got we're forming one mole of a substance from its constituent elements in their standard states. The best way to think about it from now on is we essentially need to convert both of these substances into these substances here. So we need to turn sodium, solid, into a gas and we need to put a one plus charge on it. We need to ionise it in other words. And we need to do the same with the chlorine. We've got half a mole of Cl2 gas and we need to turn it into a mole of Cl minus gaseous ions. And that involves a sequence of steps and the rule is you're only allowed to do one thing at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the sodium, the solid sodium, into gaseous sodium. The chlorine, nothing's happened to that and so it stays exactly as it was on the previous line. So this process here is called the enthalpy change of atomization. Now I always do the, the metal first and then the non-metal. This is an endothermic process, so you can see the up arrow, because to turn a solid into a gas you've obviously got to give it energy and therefore that's endothermic of course. So the sodium is a step closer to where it needs to be. We'll do the same to the chlorine now. This is a little bit more complicated. It's not too bad though. So the sodium's not changing. I'll put that on before I forget. And we need to turn the chlorine with half a mole of Cl2 gas into one mole of Cl gas. Now that is the atomization of chlorine. I'll just explain what happened there. So if you think about the chlorine here, what we've got, I'll just write it down here, we've got chlorine, the molecule, we've got Cl2 covalently bonded. So, and what we want to do is we want to break that covalent bond and turn it into Cl atoms. Okay, so that's obviously gas, gas. And there's the half, because it's half a mole of Cl2. So that, equ that little equation there actually represents the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine. So what's the definition for the enthalpy change of atomization? It's the enthalpy change that accompanies the formation of one mole of gaseous atoms, I've got one mole of gaseous atoms there, from the element in its standard state. So the standard state of chlorine is a gas, the standard state of sodium is a solid. Now we've got the two substances in the gaseous atom form, we need to put charges on them. So the first one we're going to do is the metal, so we're going to ionise sodium. So we're going to turn a sodium atom, a gaseous sodium atom, into a gaseous 1 plus ion. And we do that by removing the outer electron. The electron must live on, this, on the line there. The chlorine hasn't changed, so that just stays as Cl gas. Remember, you're only allowed to change one thing at a time. And what's this process? It's obviously the first ionization. So it's delta H IE1, and that's obviously the first ionization energy of sodium. The end that we change when one mole of gaseous one plus ions is formed from one mole of gaseous atoms. So you can see we're very close to where we need to be now. We need to just turn this chlorine atom into a chloride ion. So that's actually an exothermic process and that's because there's going to be an attraction from the nucleus on the chlorine atom and this electron. So you can see this electron now disappears because it's, well it's essentially it's brought about that negative charge there. So this enthalpy change here 
is what we call the electron affinity. Electron affinity. And that's the entropy change that accompanies the formation of one mole of gaseous one minus ions from one mole of gaseous atoms. To give it its correct title, this is the first electron affinity. So you can see we've got the completed cycle now. What we're going to do next is apply Hess's law to the cycle. And remember Hess's law states that when there are more than one route possible, the overall entropy change for each route are equal, as long as you start and finish with the same substances. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create two routes. I'm going to call this route one. Okay, so we're starting with the um, elements in their standard physical states, and we are finishing with the one mole of the solid ionic lattice. So the blue route is route one. And hopefully you can appreciate the other route. So there's another way we can go from the elements in the standard physical states to the one mole of solid ionic lattice. And that is to do that, then that, then that, then that, then that. So this is route two. So it's all the way up to there and then all the way back down to there. So we've got a simple route, the blue route, and we've got a quite complicated route there. So I've written across the top there the, um, the equation for Hess's law. So the blue route, delta rate chat, essentially equals the sum of the parts of the other route. So what are the parts of the red route? We've got the atomization of sodium plus the atomization of chlorine plus the first ionization energy of sodium plus the first electron affinity of chlorine plus the lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride. And then remember the, the way this whole thing started was why do we use born harbor cycles? We use them essentially to calculate lattice enthalpies because we can't measure them directly. So if that's your only unknown in the cycle, you can rearrange and solve for the unknown. Now sometimes you're given the lattice enthalpy and you have to find one of the other terms. We'll just finish off with the two factors which can affect the magnitude of the lattice enthalpy. So we have the ionic radius, and I've underlined the word ionic because I see so many times students write the atomic radius and they lose the mark, and the ionic charge. So we'll use sodium chloride versus potassium chloride to explain ionic radius. So have a think, which of these will have the most exothermic lattice enthalpy? In other words, which of these two ionic compounds will the attraction between the ions be the strongest? So the answer is, it's the sodium chloride would have the more exothermic lattice enthalpy, the stronger ionic bond. And that's because the sodium ion has a smaller ionic radius than the potassium ion. You notice the chloride ion is constant. So this is the only factor that's changed. There's a greater attraction between these two ions than these two ions. We'll finish with ionic charge. So we've got two oxides. We've got sodium oxide versus magnesium oxide. Which is going to have the most negative, the most exothermic lattice enthalpy? And the answer is it's magnesium oxide. And that's because it contains a 2 plus ion as opposed to a 1 plus ion. So the common ion now is the oxide ion. We've got a 2 plus ion, so there's a much greater attraction between these two ions than these ions here. And by the way, magnesium ions are actually, they have a smaller ionic radius than sodium ions. So the other factor is at play as well. And as a result of its very high lattice enthalpy, magnesium oxide is used as a furnace lining because it can withstand very, very high temperatures.